So ODESK enables companies to hire, to manage, and to, ma to pay remote talent from around the world. So we've built a global marketplace uh, enabling uh, companies to reach, uh, reach talent from all over the world. So in this, uh, in this environment, in this economy, unemployment's at an all-time high. Companies are trying to get more done with less, and we're trying to solve that problem. Uh, I'm not going to talk much about ODESK today. What we're going to talk about is some of the trends that we're seeing uh, around talent. And so um, I, I think I have a couple of key themes here. I don't think any of this is going to be new information. And I actually wanted to leave some time at the end for questions or commentary if, uh, if we want to have a, a brief discussion about it. So let's go ahead and dive right into the trends. And again, we're taking this from the perspective of the employer. I think there's a whole other conversation about uh, perspective from the talent. And maybe we'll cross themes a little bit in the, in the presentation. So the first theme that I'm going to talk about is that the, the, uh, the war for talent has been going on for some time. I was just having a conversation with uh, Mike from Riviera Partners outside, and he said that um, they're, a, they're a search firm. They help uh, find and match VPs of engineering with, uh, with startups and big companies. And he said they're, uh, they're, they're not having to sell at all their services. They're getting pulled into uh, as many deals as they can handle. Uh, they're up to 35 people. And he said the salaries for VPs of engineering are going through the roof, right? And the reason why is because there's just not a, enough of that talent in this area. So despite the fact that unemployment is at an all-time high, for certain skills, we, we can't hire enough. So quick show of hands amongst the group. How many people are hiring right now for their companies? So 68% uh, of people, not in the room, I didn't just add it up in my head, but 68% of companies say they can't hire uh, fast enough. So despite the fact that unemployment has never been higher, we're all struggling to find good talent uh, to build our teams. And as Dave said, it's not only finding the talent, but then it's creating the culture where those people can do their best. Uh, I had the good fortune to be at a, an Allen & Company event this week, and Owen Van Nata from uh, Zynga was presenting. And Owen said that uh, they have no trouble finding talent. Uh, but what they do is they bring in the talent, and they see how people do. They, it's sort of like a try before you buy. And people that don't make the grade, they get them off the bus. Uh, but they're getting much more diligent about bringing more people in. And even with all of the, with no challenge getting people in, they still can't meet their growth numbers because they're growing so fast. And I think as we all recognize, that puts pressure on us, right, as small business owners to compete uh, with that talent. So certain skills are very much in demand. Those skills have all of the power, evidenced by the fact that they're commanding higher and higher wages, and, um, and they have choices. They have three, four, and five choices, so you have to compete for, for good talent. Uh, churn, baby, churn. So the purpose of this slide really is to talk about the fact that uh, really just what I mentioned about, about Zynga. And last year, actually in January alone, there were 1,500 mass layoffs affecting about 150,000 people. So companies are having to do more with less. They're having to trim the fat. Worse than that, they're having to trim muscle. They're having to cut into uh, good talent because they can't afford to keep everybody. They're getting much more specialized. So companies are cutting more. They're not afraid to cut. It's a, it's a necessity. And this is, in turn, making the talent weary of going to the wrong place. And a lot of people now are saying, hey, I'd like to be independent. I don't want to go work for a company. I'd like to be a contractor or, uh, or a freelancer because I, um, I want to take control of my own destiny, not put it in the hands of somebody else. So uh, companies are churning more. They have to. They're not afraid to do it. And, um, and they're looking to replace with, uh, with getting the right people on the bus, as Dave also mentioned in his introduction. Uh, the third theme that I want to talk about is skills. Skills are getting killed. Companies aren't investing in mu as much in work workforce development. And what they're expecting is people to come in and really uh, prove it on the job. So they're not, uh, they're not investing in training as much as they, they were even 10 years ago. And they're expecting more out of the employees in a uh, sort of swing sink or swim mode. So they're throwing people into jobs and expecting them to get the skills that they need in or order to be successful. They're also not training as broadly. So it used to be, um, you know, you go to work at a company like IBM where I had the 
misfortune or good fortune to work at. And uh, what they used to do is train you in different disciplines. They would take somebody out of sales and stick them into finance. Didn't care that you didn't know anything about finance because they were developing you for the long haul. And that doesn't really happen today. It happens in startups where uh, in jungle mode, everybody needs a machete. But as soon as you get on the dirt road and the highway, you have to get, you get more uh, specialized into where they need you. And, but they're not giving you the training that you need to be successful in that role. Instead, what they're doing is churning and looking for the skills that they need in order to, uh, to do that job. So, uh, and because and companies can and they, they, have to, uh, they have to work this way. So not as much being invested in employee development. Uh, the, the next uh, trend that uh, we're seeing is that companies are tapping into flexible staff. So whether it be remote through a platform like Odesk, accessing talent outside of your local geography and working with them remotely, or uh, you're hiring contractors locally, or you're checking on Craigslist to find people with skills just to get a specific gig or project done. So by way of example, I've been traveling all week. I got home last night. These slides were in my inbox. They were done by a, uh, by a graphic designer in our network. So our marketing team went out, said, here's the themes that Gary wants to talk about. Can you create the slides? I saw the slides for the first time last night. So, so that's an example of we, where we leveraged a contractor resource to get work done, so we didn't have to use that in-house. And this was about $12 an hour to have these slides done uh, by a, a stay-at-home mom in Texas, right? So uh, flexible staff, uh, uh, people are uh, the same reason they're using software as a service, and infrastructure as a service and platform as a service, uh, companies now are using labor as a service and they're tapping into labor as a service for the same reasons they want, uh, they want all their other resources that aren't a core competency to be as a service. Uh, companies today, the next trend I want to talk about is plugging into talent directly. And so what do we mean by this? Well, it used to be that um, you always hired a recruiter. You, you always leverage your, uh, your employees to refer, like referral bonuses and the like are big. If you have the right people on the bus, typically they're birds of a feather flock together. They're going to refer other good people into the company. What's happening now is people are using some of the tools and social media and social marketing um, and social sites out there in order to reach talent. And things like LinkedIn, uh, what you can do is you can go and look specifically for the skills that you want from the companies that may be relevant to yours, and you can tap into that talent directly with a lot more transparency and visibility and trust than never before, right? Because on LinkedIn or even Facebook, you can see who does this person know that I know, and you, uh, you can get an introduction right to the talent a, a, a lot easier. So there's lots of people that are looking for work, but chances are the, the people you want may not be looking. You might want to tap into the people that aren't, and you can plug into talent directly now through all of the, the social tools that are out there. The next uh, theme, uh, or the next thing that we, we're seeing is making the brand uh, stand out. So again, along the lines of, of social and uh, the fact that everything's out there, uh, your, brand, um, your brand really has to be able to stand on its own. So what, pe what are people saying at you? There's a lot of technologies and tools, things like Glassdoor, and uh, you can see what's the feedback, what's the reputation, what are people saying about your company that used to work there, that are working there today? Uh, what are your partners saying? What are your customers saying? What's being said about your company in general? And this can really help or hurt you depending on, um, on how easy it is for you to attract talent. Uh, at the conference that I was in uh, Arizona at this week, Dick Costello from Twitter was, was speaking, and somebody asked him about the war for talent, and he said, oh, we're having no trouble attracting people. They have such a good brand, everybody's aware of the product, most people use the product, they like the product, they can attract talent. So the brand stands on its own in order to attract the talent they, uh, they need. Uh, all of us don't have that luxury, and so you have to create a good brand that's going to be able to sell when you're not in the room. And the importance of doing that today is, is, uh, is paramount. So what's in your toolkit? And uh, this may be the, the one slide that the designer created. I didn't know the guy from the village people was still around. But um, what's in your toolkit? What are you using to recruit? We talked about the social, uh, the social tools that are available today. 
Uh, there's a lot of great platforms. We're using uh, Jobvite to try and attract more, more candidates. So we have the ability to post the job. We have the ability to, to uh, push that job out into the, into the cloud. We have the ability to source the candidates via our social network and keep track of all the candidates, schedule the interviews, and do that all through a SaaS platform. And that's enabled us to hire more effectively. And we figured out that if you hire one or two people, by leveraging that technology, it pays for itself for the year. And so we're looking for an edge. We're trying to figure out what tools are, are available and what should we use in order to help solve this problem of, of talent acquisition. So I think there's a lot more technologies out there today. And um, I, I think it's incumbent upon us to make sure we're aware of what those technologies are and try and get the most leverage that we can, because the old ways just aren't working. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you today. Thank you.